Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Macon Campbell and this is Macon Stuff. So the time has come for me to finally get started on this antique pump organ. So today I'm going to crack this thing open and I'm going to start assessing the damage if any. Take a look inside uh, and see if I can get this thing back into a working condition. Now a working condition is relative because I don't really have a benchmark to compare this to. So I'll walk you through some of the things that I think need looking at and I guess we'll take it from there. So before I get started on that, um, let me tell you a little bit about what I found out about this specific uh, pump organ. Firstly, of course, it is a Chicago Cottage Organ Company uh, pump organ and <clears throat> according to this product catalog I found from the 1890s, this is a Series 905, um, 13 stops. And based on information that I found regarding the serial numbers, this one serial number is uh, 19,500S. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the S stands for. That could possibly be because it was sold in South Africa. It comes obviously from Chicago. Around 1892, their serial numbers were at around 43,000. Around 1894, they were at 118,000. And by 1907, they were already up to 250,000, a quarter of a million units manufactured. So uh, taking that into account, if the serial number on the back is correct, that would date this specific organ to um, at least pre-1892. As you can see, this organ was sold in South Africa by a company called R. Mueller, which was apparently the sole agent for these organs in Cape Town in South Africa. So as this one is uh, specifically branded that way, that means that this was probably made specifically for sale in South Africa. I haven't managed to find a whole lot of information about um, the company R. Mueller. I did manage to find this flyer um, from the company in an online book that I found called um So other than that, I haven't been able to find a whole lot more. I also haven't been spending that much time on, on research, but uh, that is what I've found so far. Um, hopefully, while taking this thing apart, I'm going to learn a couple more things. And this is obviously going to be a learning experience for me as well as for you. So let's move over to the organ. I'll show you what it sounds like at the moment and uh, go through a couple of things that I'm going to start with today. So if I've dated this thing correctly, this chair should be uh, around 130 years old. So I really hope that this thing doesn't break while I'm demonstrating here. So from what I've learned about um, pump organs, um, they go by three different names. Some people refer to them as pump organs because you have to pump the bellows to get wind through them. Some people refer to them as reed organs because they have little brass reeds um, that the air is blown through uh, to make the sound and uh, others will also refer to them as parlor organs because apparently back in the day they used to be found in parlors. From what I've learned about these organs is that these are wind instruments, nothing like pianos except for the fact that they are key instruments, that being the only similarity between this and a piano. So uh, the way this works is uh, it has bellows inside and <clears throat> by pumping the bellows you get wind to flow through the reeds making sound and by activating or deactivating these which are called stops um, you can get different sounds out of the instrument to demonstrate I'm going to pull out all the stops just because by doing that I know that uh, everything is activated and there should be sound coming out of all of these so I have done a bit of testing, there are a couple of dead keys which I will get to eventually. According to what I've learned, the reason for dead keys is usually that uh, the reeds are gunked up and dirty and need to be cleaned. So uh, as I said, I don't have a benchmark for how this thing should sound, but I do suspect that uh, the bellows have got holes in them. So uh, one of the first things that I'm going to do today is uh, try and get to the bellows, see if it's possible to take them out and uh, assess what kind of damage there is and see if it's possible to fix them. Hopefully I'll be able to patch them if there are any holes. With all the stops out, uh, let me show you what it sounds like. Now please bear in mind I am not familiar with any key instruments like this, pianos, I've never played that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm a guitar player, <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to play a couple of uh, chords here, see what it sounds like.
you guys can hear any of that. Um, I know it doesn't sound musical at all, but at least you can hear what it sounds like. Uh, I'm going to try and push some of these back um, in a later video, uh, once I've learned a bit more about these stops. I'll go through what uh, the stops are and what they're supposed to do. The only two that I know for sure right now is the bass coupler and the treble coupler. What they basically do is they just double up your bass or your treble. So if you have your bass coupler activated, you'll notice if I press a key over here, it will automatically press an octave lower over there. The same with the treble, it will also activate uh, one octave higher than the key that you press. These little levers that come out the side are, I think, called knee swells. Um, this one, once pressed, uh, will open a louver on the inside, apparently to let more sound through so uh, it'll make your sound a little louder so let's try that uh, that seems to be working from what i've read i think that this lever on this side apparently when pushed uh, will simulate opening all the stops i'm not exactly sure if that is how this specific one works but uh, now once I start going through all the mechanisms and checking uh, everything inside, this one does feel a bit tight and doesn't feel like it's working properly, so I don't want to force it. So uh, I'll be getting to that uh, once I get inside the machine. <clears throat> As you can see from what I've already found is that if I go through all the keys, there's a key that's dead. There's another one that's... No, that one works. That one's dead. That one works. So there's a very faint sound coming out of that one. And then the last one works again. Other than that, from what I can tell, is all the other keys work. That's a workout. <coughs> Get out of breath just playing this thing. So, uh, as I said, firstly, bellows is what I'm going to be looking at today. The next thing, um, possibly also part of this video, is going to be locating the reeds, finding out where they sit, uh, how to take them out, how to clean them, and uh, and so forth. So, uh, let's get this thing cracked open. Okay, so I noticed that you can open this compartment over here, and uh, this will give you access to the straps that are driven by the pedals uh, which in turn activate the bellows which you can see over here. You can see it looks like two planks, <coughs> obviously two bellows, one for each pedal. And if you press on the pedals, the bellows open and close and uh, I can feel some wind here by my hand where I'm pumping. so. Uh, as I said, obviously I think there are obviously holes in here. So obviously I can't access the full bellow from uh, the front here, so I'm going to have to go around the back. First of all, I'm going to see if I can get this thing off, because I don't want this in the way while I'm working. Okay, looks like I can get that off. There we go. I'm not sure if this is the original piece that was in here that's terribly bent I can't think that that's what uh, it would have looked like um, looking at this piece of wood this is plywood um, I'm not even sure if this whole piece is the original that was on here perhaps when I get to the cosmetics I might uh, change this uh, for a, a solid piece of wood but uh, for now let's get this out of the way and uh, move on so the only other panel that can be opened up here without tools is the, this back panel over here up. Okay. Oh, that's pretty dusty. Uh. Got no idea what that is. A whole lot of stuff here. <laughs> this whole thing over here seems to be part of the cover for the keys in front. Close that. 
So there the cover for the keyboard is in the closed position and uh, that gives quite a bit more access uh, in the back here. Here you can see is obviously the stops and uh, all the mechanisms all the mechanisms that they activate and deactivate which I'll obviously be going through as we get into that. So quite obviously uh, you can't see the bellows in this top compartment. Uh, I'm going to have to open up this bottom compartment to, uh, to get to them. So uh, let's do that next. None of these screws look like originals. These are definitely not from uh, the 1890s. This one, however, does look like it's pretty old. As you can see, this one does look a whole lot older than these. These must have been replaced uh, later. look very amazing inside here very dirty I don't know if this is water damage looks like something was running down here aha uh -huh. not sure what that is Something interesting that I just noticed here is there is a, another number inside here which could possibly be a serial number. Looks as if it says 179,400 which doesn't match the serial number what I thought was a serial number up here. If that is truly the case then this is not from pre-1892 uh, being uh, roughly 180,000 that would put it at about 1894 let's keep going deeper and uh, see what else we find okay so I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna get these bellows out uh, looks like they're pretty well stuck in there uh, looks like I'm gonna have to take at least this off uh, I'm hoping I'm not gonna have to take any of the top off to be able to get them out but uh, if I have to, so be it. Um, but before I do any of that, as you can tell, it is terribly dusty in here. So I'm going to drag this thing outside and give it a bit of a once over with the blower and carry on from there. So I'm a little worried about taking this part off just yet because uh, you probably can't see this but uh, this specific part is not held on by screws like most of the other parts. It's held in with nails and uh, anyone who's done a bit of woodworking will know that getting uh, nails out is a lot harder than getting screws out which means I'm going to have to pry it and uh, on this side specifically it looks like there's a crack in the wood already. So I'm worried that if I start prying this, then I'm going to break it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing it around and uh, see how far in I can get from the front. So let's do that.
that's probably why it was sticking seeing this thing is bent there we go one problem already sorted uh, that cast iron 1890s bracket that's pretty cool So I think I'm just starting to realize how ill-equipped I am to tackle a project like this. Um, now that doesn't mean I'm giving up, that just means that I need to do a bit more research. I'm going to have to join a couple of read or pump organ forums, ask a couple of questions, get some good advice before I ruin this uh, antique piece. The deeper I go into this, the more I notice that uh, almost everything is held together with uh, nails. It seems to me that I'm going to have no other choice than to go uh, full beast mode on this thing and just uh, break apart what needs to be broken apart and uh, hope that I don't do too much damage and the damage that I do cause I can hopefully fix but before I retire for the day and uh, go and hit the books and do a bit more research uh, there's just one more thing that I would like to check and that is the reeds I just want to find out where they are and uh, how challenging it is going to be to get to them and uh, ultimately remove them for cleaning at a later stage I'm guessing that uh, they should be somewhere around here under the keys so I'm going to take this off and and see what we can find under there. Looks like there's still quite a bit of dust in here that didn't get blown out. Ugh. I can see the levers here that um, are activated by these swells. This one, see if you open it, it opens up this, which lets through more air, more sound, and uh, that in increases the overall volume. Aha, I think I've just located the reeds, at least uh, a set of them. I don't know how many sets there are, but uh, right underneath here, I can see all of them. I don't know if you can see it, those little brass bits sticking out there, those are the reeds. And from what I can tell by these scratches over here is that these reeds have definitely been taken out before. So uh, this organ has definitely been either serviced or repaired or tuned at some stage since it's been made. From what I can tell, it looks like there's a bit of a divot in the end of the reed, which uh, is obviously going to be where you insert a tool to remove the reed. I don't know if this is a good idea, but uh, I'm going to try and take one out, just one, so that I can see what it looks like and how hard it is to get out and get back in again. Wish me luck. Okay, so I've just very quickly made this, which I'm going to call a reed puller. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they look like. Um, I'll find out later when I start doing my research. It's just a piece of wire that I flattened at the end and I bent it down at a 90 degree angle which should hopefully be able to grab onto the reed so I can pull it out. So uh, let's see how that goes. Okay, there we go. Let's just make sure you guys can see in there. Let's see if I can pull one of those out. Oh, I 
to work like a charm. There you have it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's even got the note on there. This is an A sharp. I can see quite a bit of scraping on the top of the tongue of this one, so that just confirms that they've definitely been tuned. I've seen people blow into these and sound coming out and see if let's see if that works. It doesn't seem to be working for me. But uh, all in all, it doesn't look terrible. I'm going to put this one back the way I found it. At least now I know where they are and what they look like. And I have a method of removing and uh, replacing them. So I guess I'm going to have to catch you in the next video. Okay, so as I said, uh, this is not me giving up. Uh, I've just got to work on a better game plan before I carry on with this organ. As you can probably guess, uh, you can't just go out and order new parts for this thing. So anything I break, I have to be able to um, fix or remake myself. With that being said, uh, this is a shout out to uh, anyone who has done anything like this before, knows the mechanics uh, of an organ like this. I would really very much appreciate any advice on this going forward. And obviously today wasn't lost, you know, I know a lot more now about the inner workings of this machine than I did this morning before I started. So armed with everything I've learned today going through this uh, organ, along with uh, any research that I'm going to be doing for the rest of the day, by the time I walk in here tomorrow or the day after, I will hopefully have a better idea of how to move forward with uh, this project. So uh, I hope you don't see this video as a failure. I definitely don't. Uh, I've definitely learned something today and uh, hopefully so have you. So when I come back with the next part of this video, I will hopefully be a lot more clued up than I am right now. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you know of anyone that is into this kind of uh, restoration and into uh, pump organs, reed organs in general, uh, please share it with them. Uh, perhaps uh, they'll be able to help me as well. So uh, till next time, keep making stuff.